Integrated Security Software Honeywell's WinPack software solution provides a cost-effective way to integrate and manage access control, video surveillance, and intrusion detection through a single interface. Building upon WinPack's legendary and robust workstation-based management system, WinPack provides an intuitive browser-based interface, allowing users to perform common access control actions from virtually anywhere. WinPack can be easily scaled from a single site up to a multi-region enterprise-level solution, without placing restrictions on the number of users or sites being managed. WinPack supports third-party integrations such as HID's Mobile Access, BioConnect, Suprema, and Morpho Biometrics, Point Off Sale Systems, Visitor Management, and HR Applications. Using the included WinPack API, your software developers can create custom integrations to meet your integration needs. This video is all about interfacing or adding ICs, intelligent controller boards, reader boards, and card readers into WinPack software. In the previous video, we have seen how to provide IP address to an IC board using web browser. If you have seen it yet, link given in the description, or you can get the video by clicking on I button. Without any ado, Let's start today's video. First of all user has to check whether IC board available on the network or not. For that, try to ping the IP address of the IC board. To do that, press Window plus R key from keyboard. Run command window will open. Type ping space IP address space dash T. Then click on OK. As you can see on the screen that the pinging report says the IC board is available on the network. Let's minimize this window and open WinPack software by double-clicking on the WinPack user interface icon from desktop. Once software open, connect to server dialog box will appears. Type the username and password set while installing the software. When user first log on to the WinPack user interface, by default, the user credentials are admin and blank password. However, to ensure security user must set the password during the first login. Basically WinPack installation setup installs only the demo version. That has no expiry date, however it has following limitations. That only a 10 card database can be maintained. User cannot add cards in bulk. And user cannot print badges. However, in the upcoming videos we will see how to make license for WinPack software. As of now, we will proceed with demo version, so click on OK. Once login into the software, default the alarm view window displays. Alarm is an event or an access control activity that must be acted upon as soon as it occurs. The alarm view window displays alarms when they occur and continues to beep the sound until it is acknowledged. The alarm view window is divided into two horizontal panels. Incoming alarms are displayed in the upper panel according to priority and time. The color of an alarm indicates the state of an alarm. Keep this window side for some time, and let's add IC board into WinPack. To do that go to configuration from menu bar, then device, then device map. The device window will appears. Here user can see the added IC boards. As you can see on the screen, one IC board is already added. I want to add one more, for that move cursor on devices folder and click the right mouse button. A submenu is displayed, point to add, and click on the direct P series panel. The panel configuration basic dialog box will appears. Type a unique name for the panel. This field is mandatory. Next type the description of the panel, it's optional. Then select the panel type from the available options of PRO2200 or PRO3200. Here I'm selecting PRO3200 because I have this panel installed on the site. In the IC address, enter a unique address of the intelligent controller board. It must be uniquely defined for each panel. Next enter the value for host retry count. The host retry count is the number of times. The host computer has to send a command packet to the intelligent controller. Host retry count can be set from 2 to 10, 3 is the default. A range of 2 to 4 is recommended for most applications. 
retry counts, above 4 would be used in extreme circumstances, such as in a noisy environment. Here I'm not changing the default value. Next enter the value for time to IC offline. This is the maximum time allowed for the software to declare the panel as offline. When there is no response from the intelligent controller, the time to IC offline can be set from 10 to 65 seconds, 15 seconds is the default. A range of 10 to 30 seconds is recommended for most applications. Here also I'm not changing the default value. Select the communication server from the list. But if you have single server, it will take default that server. So no need to change it. Once finish this setting. Click next to configure the connection settings. In the connection settings dialog box. Select the type of connection as TCP IP, which is used for connecting the P-series directly, to the host computer. Next I see reply timeout. It is the duration the host computer waits for an acknowledgement, after it has sent an outgoing packet. If acknowledgement is not received within the specified time, the host PC resends the packet. The host retries according to the host retry count set in the panel. The timeout defaults to 500 milliseconds. But user can be set from 200 to 1500 milliseconds. Next poll delay. This enables the system to delay polling to avoid loading down the network. If there is no activity, the default for the poll delay is 2 seconds, but user can set range from 0 to 5. Next TCP IP retry connect. Interval. This is the time the system waits to reopen a socket, after a connection to the network is lost and the socket is closed. The system waits for this time, and then tries to determine, if there is a device at the other end of the socket. If a device is found, a new socket is opened. The default for this interval is 1 seconds but user can be set from 5 to 30 seconds. Next IP address, or node name of the IC. Enter the IP address, configured for the LAN of the intelligent controller. Click next to set the system configuration. In the P-series configuration, system dialog box, select the standard time zone for setting the time zone, for the PRO3200 intelligent controller. Next the Daylight Savings Group, keep as default. Next number of card holders. Specify the maximum number of card holders details, to be stored based on the memory available in the board. By default, you can store details of 5000 card holders and controller. Next number of transactions to hold when IC is offline, specify the number of transactions to be buffered in the controller. By default, you can store 10,000 transactions in a buffer storage. This number is decreased, or increased to provide more, or less memory for cards if necessary. Next host grant. This option used when, for example, a number of cards are entered in the database, but not yet downloaded to the panel. Keep it as disable, which does not allow the card holder, if the card is not found in the panel. Click next to set the card formats for the P-series panel. In the P-series configuration, card formats dialog box. Select a card format to be used for the panel, in the format hash list. The format number ranges from 1 through 8, keep it as default format. Next under option. Keep it default, which to view the default settings for the card format. Selecting this option enables you to set the site code, card ID offset, and the default formats. Click next to configure time zones for the panel. In the panel configuration, time zones dialog box. Select the time zones from the available time zone list. The time zones that are listed in selected time zone are available for readers, inputs, and outputs of this panel. Time zone is used to set access for the entrances in particular area, to allow or deny the access through the entrance for a particular time. Click next to add SIO boards to intelligent controller. The number of readers, inputs, and outputs that can be connected to the controller is based on the type of SIO board that is added to the intelligent controller. In the P-series configuration, SIO boards dialog box, click on add button. The select board type dialog box appears for user to select the SIO board. The available SIO board types are 16 zone input and output, 16 relay output, 2 reader IO, 1 reader IO, here I'm adding 2 reader I.O. board. 
user can use the same procedure for adding other types of SIO boards. Once select the board, click OK to configure the basic information of SIO board. The SIO board configuration dialog box appears. Click on the basic tab. It is displayed by default. Type a unique address for the SIO board. Next in the port list, select the port from which the board communicates with the intelligent controller. Keep it as default port number. Next number of errors before going offline field. Type a number of attempts the panel must make to communicate with the communication server before tripping the offline trigger. This field defaults to 3. Next select the Enable Communication with SIO checkbox. For enabling connection with the SIO board. Select this checkbox, only if the board is installed. Next select the Reverse IO Poll Sequence checkbox, to reverse the sequence in which the inputs and outputs are polled. Next create an ADV for the selected board type. Click on Add under ADV, and set the ADV properties. Then type a unique name of the board. Next description is optional. Then don't change any other settings and click on OK. Next click the Reader tab to configure readers for SIO board. Select a reader and create an ADV for the reader. Type the unique name for reader. Then type description which is optional. Do not change any other setting, and click on OK. Repeat the same steps for second reader as well. Next in the reader type. Select the type of reader. The available reader types are standard NCI5 wire, standard Motorola, standard Mercury, and standard HID. However I have standard NCI5 wire on the site installed. So I will select that, the other setting keep as it is. Next we will have inputs tap, where we can define extra inputs if any. Next we will have outputs tap, where we can define extra outputs if any. Once we finish all the settings click on OK. Here a user can verify. The added SIO board details, such as address, port number, and board type. Click next to configure triggers, and procedures. Here I don't have any configuration so. Let me click next, and finish panel configuration. Once user clicks on finish, WinPack gives an alert to initialize the added panel, manually for first time. To continue click on OK. As you can see on the screen, the panel is added into WinPack. Now let's define the control area. Go to configuration. Then define. Then control areas. The control area window will appears. Control areas are logical areas, containing devices such as loops, panels, input points, output points, groups, and readers. Control areas are defined by creating a control map of the devices, and adding them to a tree structure. This map shows the status of each device, the set of actions to be performed for the device, when an event takes place, and the relationship between the various devices. Extract the tree by clicking on site name. Here we have three different branches, or folders in the tree. First folder for intelligent control panels. Second folder for SIO, or two reader IO board. And third folder for card readers. Let's start adding from intelligent control panel. Before that extract the folder, and check how many controllers are added. As you can see only one IC is added. Let's add second IC. To do that right click on folder, and select add devices, the add devices dialog box will appears. Select the device type as panel. The devices belonging to the selected device type are listed. Select the device to be added, and click on add button. To select multiple devices, press and hold down control key, and click each device. Once the device added it will display it in the control area window. As you can see on the screen. Next add SIO, or 2 reader IO board, by changing the device type as SIO board.
As you can see on the screen the SIO board is added into control area window. Next add card readers by changing the device type as entrance. Now let's navigate to operations from menu. Then control map. The control map window will appears. Control map enables user to view and control the devices belonging to the control area. In addition, user can view the status, acknowledge, and clear alarms, and run various commands for each device. The status of each device is indicated by the following icons, to the left of the device. Green dot is normal status. Red square is alarm condition status. In this status device will be work normally. Question mark symbol is unknown status. It means device is not communicating. As you can see the added IC is in normal status. It means it's communicating with WinPack server. But SIO board is alarm condition. And the card readers are unknown status. To solve this issue we have to initialize the IC. To initialize an IC from the control map, right click on the P series panel in the control map tree and select initialize. The panel initialization options dialog box will appear. To send all types of information, click select all button. Then click on OK. As the panel initializes, a status window indicates the status of sending the information. If an error occurs, the status window indicates which command caused the error. Once the panel completed the initialization, the SIO board status changes to normal. As you can see on the screen. Let's check the card readers. As you can see on the screen both readers change the statuses from unknown status to alarm condition. It means our configuration working fine. In the upcoming videos, we will see the complete configuration for WinPack server. Hope you learn how to add IC, R2, and card readers into WinPack server by this video. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. If you want any assistances regarding networking, CCTV, access control, public addressing systems, contact our team by given platforms.